for fans by a fan. Watch, watch, watch that. A wrestling podcast for the casual and hardcore <laughs> tweener wrestling. He's got the fans behind him, King, and his opponent had better watch out. Season 2, Episode 8, Tween and Wrestling Podcast. Your man, Memphian Plays, we back. Today is September the 30th, and we are discussing these rumors of Jay Cargill possibly going to the WWE. Now, before we get into it, y'all know what I'm about to say. If you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead and sub and like. And if you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or whatever podcast platform you're listening to it on, go ahead and rate the podcast, leave a review as well. One more thing before we get into the episode. For the past two weeks, I passed my milestone, our milestone, of 100 subs on YouTube. Now, that is something that might be small to you. It's major for me. We're actually about halfway to 200 subs on youtube that is something that that's really just mind-blowing the fact that there's over 100 people listening to my ugly ass voice i greatly appreciate each and every one of you let's get into today's episode confusion is an understatement i have no idea what's going on but we are about to try to dissect and analyze What the hell is going on with Jay Cargill? So, Jay returned to AEW after months of being gone, after losing her uh, TBS championship to Chris Statlander. She came back September the 9th, 2023, on an episode of AEW Collision and comes out at the end of a TBS championship match between Chris Statlander and robin um robin renegade now it's a group called the renegade twin so forgive me if i'm saying the wrong twin but i believe it was robin renegade so the match was hella boring whatever we watching it okay it's wrestling it's saturday ain't shit else on um (laughs) but we watching the match it's boring as shit chris uh obviously picks up the win chris statliner wins the match and jade music hits at the end of the match now before her music hit, I forgot to say the Renegade twins, the other twin, jumps in the ring and they put um, a horrible beat down on Chris Statliner. And the crazy part about it is, this is how you know the Renegade twins need need work is they kept looking up the ramp, waiting for Jade's music to hit before her music even hit. So even before I knew it was about to be a return they kind of gave it away because they looked up the ramp twice waiting for the moment. So I don't know what was going on. They need to fix that, get that together. All right. So the music hits, she comes out, she lays waste to both of the Renegade twins. Now when the music hit, Jay didn't get no type of pop. Typically when the music hit of a returning superstar, crowd lose their shit if they like you. Uh, But sometimes even if you a heel, if you've been gone for a long time, you still gonna get a nice pop. Jay didn't get no fucking type of pop. But the good thing is, once she got in the ring and she really got it going, first you start hearing the J, 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 J. You start hearing the J chants. And then um, then you start hearing the welcome back chants, which was louder than the J chants. Now, the crazy part about it is, is before J left, folks shitted all over her. Shitting all over her just because she was undefeated. Shitting all over her because she was really that bitch. Like, Jade is my favorite. She's been one of my favorite wrestlers. Top three for about two years now. Like, go back on any of my videos. If When I'm talking about Jade, I always gave her a high praise. But anyway, so she comes out. She lays out the Renegade Twins. She offers her hand to Chris Statlander, the woman who took the TBS championship from her. And then she just lays uh she lays Chris Statlander out. Now, as she's doing that, Chris Statlander is a, is a face. We all know that, right? Which means that the crowd don't give a fuck about Chris Statliner because they was cheering as Jade was laying her out. So, I guess Jade is now officially a tweener. Now, when this happened, I don't believe the rumors and speculation was there. But quickly after it happened, that's when I... Now, they could have been out there before that, but this is... I started hearing the rumors maybe about 
six days ago. Now, today is September the 20th. She returned on September the 9th. So I want to be, I want to say I started really hearing it about six days ago, but the rumors have probably been going on probably about 10 days now, um, to my knowledge. Here's where I'm hella confused though, guys. Here's where I'm hella confused. Number one, she comes back, they automatically insert her back into the TBS championship picture. Watching AEW Dynamite, Chris Statlander has had a um, lackluster TBS championship run. And it might be because of booking. It might be because of her. It might be a combination of the both. We don't really know. But Jade is very important to that, women, that women's roster. Extremely important, in my opinion. Especially for the secondary title. She's extremely important. I don't understand if her, because they say her contract is about to expire. I don't understand why they would insert her into such a important storyline with a title if her contract was expired or about to expire. Because now if she jumps ship, and let's say she shows up on Monday Night Raw, now you just had this whole thing this whole thing with her and Chris Statliner and now that storyline is just poof gone. Now you just have to just really just detour and pivot and go in another direction. Like I don't I don't understand it. That's why I'm kind of confused that I'm like if her contract was about to expire, rework the contract first and then bring her back. And I guess I'll get or will get more clarity um, on the next episode of AEW Collision, or today is Wednesday, so we might get more clarity on uh, Dynamite. So I don't know. I don't know like where they're gonna feature that rivalry at. Now, what I am also curious to see is if Jay does show up on AEW Dynamite tonight, um, will we hear some WWE chants in the crowd? Will we hear some please stay chants in the crowd? Will there be, will they actually acknowledge, acknowledge the rumors like live on TV? Like, is she going to cut a promo and whoever she's talking to gonna mention the rumors of the WWE, her going to WWE? We don't know. Um, but hopefully we get some more clarity on AEW Dynamite or AEW Collision. Cause I honestly don't. I, I can see her going to WWE. She is, to me, in my personal opinion, a WWE prototype wrestler um, as far as her looks. Now, she does need to polish her in-ring ability better, but we all have to understand that Jade has only been wrestling for a very small amount of time, and she is very good to be... She's very good as a total package to only be in the business for a short amount of time. So I like that about her. And then you can see, I, I really believe if she goes to the WWE, there's like a 75% chance she'll be Hall of Fame. 75% chance. It depends on how serious she take her WWE career if she goes there. But I'm just hella confused. Um, I would love her to go there though. Um, now, with that being said, because this won't be a long episode at all. I just wanted to really talk about it since she's one of my favorite wrestlers. Um, I was thinking booking, fantasy booking. And it might not be fantasy much longer. But I was doing some fantasy booking for Jay Cargill um, if she decides to go to the WWE. And they say that they're throwing this massive contract at her. So... She can't go to NXT because her contract is so massive. Not like Charlotte Flair, or Becky Lynch massive, but like bigger than the um, like the Tiffany Stratton's and the and the uh, and the Raquel Rodriguez and the and the Liv Morgan, like bigger than their contracts, I would assume. But it's just not on the Charlotte Becky Lynch run the Razzle type of a contract. But her contract is so massive that they don't even want to have her in NXT because of the amount of money they're paying. They want her to be featured, which is cool. That's completely understandable. That's like buying a Ferrari, but you only take the Ferrari on the dirt roads. Now, let me hit the highway with this motherfucker. We is not for to just be driving dirt roads in this Ferrari. We're going to say that for the old 
beat up pickup truck or some shit. But um, if she does show up to the main roster now me me personally again i would prefer her to go directly to the main roster now yes she does need to go to nxt to sharpen up her promo skills and her in ring ability and it would be nice for her to go win the nxt women's championship do a quick one and done however becky lynch is taking up that time with the nxt women's title at the moment and then even if becky lynch didn't have it i wouldn't want her to bury tiffany stratton right now either so we can just bypass that now fantasy booking back to that i would want her to go to monday night raw because i believe that is where the uh her business street profits group organization whatever they have i don't even know what they name is they don't even got a name yet which is crazy um and y'all can see where i'm going with this now i've seen pictures and, and the pictures look good, too, like fan-made pictures. I would really like for her to be recruited. You bring her in as an angle where she was recruited by Bobby Lashley. That is amazing. And then she comes in. She kind of, they kind of pair her a little bit with Angelo Dawkins. And the reason why I say that is because I would love for Bianca Belair to come back. She in all these, she was at the VMAs and all these award shows, baby. I need you to come back. Um, and I would like to see a Bianca Hill pair with the Jay Cargill Hill. And if they won, I would immediately make them women's tag team champions. Immediately within like the first month or two. Like whenever, like if she comes back Monday, I would make her a tag team champion at Fast Lane, the next PLE. Like, that's how quickly I would put those titles on them. Number one, because Bianca, it would help her become a Grand Slam champion quicker. I'm trying to remember if she she's NXT Women's Champ, right? Bianca had that belt. I can't remember. If she was the NXT Women's Champ, we're just going to say she is. I can't remember. Um, I want to say Bianca has been a SmackDown and a Raw Women's Champ. So those are three titles. And yeah, she needs those tag team belts. Yeah. So, and then I just think that that would be a shot of adrenaline, if I said that right. <laughs> adrenaline. Um, it would be a shot of adrenaline, of drill, adrenaline, whatever, I can't say the shit, to the women's tag team division. Give me 10 seconds to guess who's the women's tag team champions. Because the shit is always a dead division. Chelsea Green and Piper. Uh, and Piper, um, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, Chelsea Green and Piper, dead, dead shit, dead, bro, but uh, Bianca and Jay had it, man, and do you know the type of pop Jay would get from the WWE crowd, it don't matter when you a heel or you uh, uh, um, a face, like, anytime anybody jump companies, I really feel like there is, like, the crowd gonna go crazy when you get there, um, but yeah, and I think that's a good way to start Jade off as well with a, a tag team rivalry because her coming in one-on-one, -on -one, I mean, you can really throw her against anybody, but I feel like she needs to be paired in a group to kind of mask her her um, her um her lack of promo skills and her lack of in-ring ability paired with somebody like Bianca. Like, Jade can talk, but like, I feel like if you put her with Bianca, Bianca can carry most of the matches. I feel like her and Bianca would get along great. Um, there's been a lot of times where I've seen her and Bianca kind of admire each other from a distance in like mirror outfits. Um, so I just, I would really like to see them in a tag team together. I don't know what the fuck they're going to be called, but I would like to see them in, as a tag team. I would like to see them pair with Bobby Lashley. I would actually like to see MVP come back in and Bobby Lashley take more of a single, a singles wrestler um, role versus the uh, a managerial role. But that's really it. That's really it. Um, I don't really know. I'm following this story very closely, guys. I really don't know what the hell is going on. I think at the end of this week, we definitely going to have more clarity after we watch AEW Dynamite and AEW Collision. Now, if Jade is not on neither show, if she don't make an appearance tonight nor Saturday, Sunday, 
or Monday. Mon Monday morning, you guys gonna get a whole new video on Jay Cargill, and it's gonna be like the hype is fucking real. If Jay don't show up on neither show, and they don't even acknowledge the TBS Championship uh, attack, really, then then we know a thousand percent sure that Jay Cargill is headed to the WWE. And that is a wrap. We are done, man. I am still hella confused, even in the outro. I don't know what direction Jade is going in. I guess we'll get some more clarity um, this week. Today is the, uh, well, tonight in about two hours, I'll be watching AEW Dynamite. Hopefully, we'll get some clarity then. Um, appreciate everybody coming through and listening to the podcast. Go ahead and uh, sub like if you haven't. Like I always say, rate the podcast on whatever platform you guys are listening to it on as well. And until episode nine, we almost at the end of season two. Until episode nine, I'm going to holler at y'all later. And I can't wait to y'all see what episode 10, the finale, is going to be about. But I'm going to holler at y'all later, all right? Deuces.